Hi kids, welcome to our next unit, Manifest Destiny, America Goes West. In this unit, we're going to look westward to find out exactly how America stretched from sea to shining sea. We've got some great questions for this unit, so listen up. Here they are. How are football, farming, and religion all relate to America going west? Uh, I'm not sure, but I hope that ends the replay. What was the Alamo, and why do people keep yelling we should remember it? I'm trying to remember. So who are the Whigs, and did you have to wear a wig to be one? Because if so, I'm totally in. What state is thought to have gotten its name from a mislabeled map? Is it too late to fix something like that? Today we'll start part one talking about farmers, football, and religion, and how they're all related to America going west. So, put on that sunscreen, grab that surfboard, we're going to catch a Mondo wave of learning. Cowabunga! We're going to get started with the name of this unit, Manifest Destiny. What does it mean? Let's get to the bottom of this with our breakdown segment. Manifest, something that is clear and obvious. The sky is blue. Duh. Destiny, a plan for the future that will happen no matter what. Oh, what a cute couple. It must be their destiny to be together. I'm George, George McFly. I'm your density. So when you put these two words together, you get Manifest Destiny, which was a phrase coined by John L. Sullivan and originally printed in 1845 in an article that supported annexing Texas, which we'll get to in the next lesson. Well, Sullivan wrote, oh, I'll just let him tell you. Our Manifest Destiny is to overspread the continent allotted by our providence for the free development of our yearly multiplying millions. What he was saying was that it was God's unchangeable plan for America to spread across the continent so that the masses of Americans could expand freely. Manifest destiny became the phrase Americans used to justify why they needed to battle Native Americans and keep getting more and more territory until they reached the Pacific Ocean. So Manifest destiny answered the why of westward expansion, but not the who. We're going to look at three groups of pioneers that made up the majority of Americans who looked west and risked everything to get there. First, let's look at the football players. Okay, in reality they weren't football players, but they became the mascot of a pretty popular West Coast team, the 49ers. The 49ers were pioneers who went west in search of gold in 1849. You see, it all started in 1848 when James Marshall was working at John Sutter's sawmill when he discovered flakes of shiny metal in the American River. I think we have a video of that, actually. He showed the metal to John Sutter and had it tested to confirm it was gold. They tried to keep it a secret to keep others from coming to the area in search of gold, but they were unsuccessful. As word spread, people came from all over the world to become wealthy. In less than six years, the area around Sutter's Mill grew by over 300,000 people. As Sutter feared, those settlers would cause a lot of problems for him and others, especially the ones who didn't find any gold, which happened to more people than not. As people poured in with dreams of getting rich, many found there was nothing to find. Small towns would spring up full of people selling mining supplies. The suppliers would end up making more money than the miners. One of the most notable suppliers was Levi Strauss, who made a fortune selling denim overalls to miners. Miners who did find gold usually made small profits and didn't usually strike it rich. Down on their luck, miners were the ones that put wild in the Wild West. Often they would turn to crime in order to survive. Because populations grew so fast, it was impossible for law enforcement to keep up and maintain law and order. At times, entire counties were run by criminals that would gain wealth by taking from others instead of earning it themselves. Overall, the long-term effects, not including the environment or the impact on Native Americans, was positive for California. Most of the increased population stayed there and helped build the largest metropolitan areas in the country. Okay, next up, farmers. Why did farmers go west? Couldn't they farm in the east? Well, as we can attest to here in Oregon, especially in the Willamette Valley, it rains a lot. Oregon weather is kind of boring. We don't get a lot of extreme weather. In other words, the Willamette Valley in Oregon had ideal conditions for farmers. Rain is good because then you don't need to water your crops so much. Warm, but not hot summers are good too. You can grow lots of food without worrying about it drying out too much. The mild winters allow for the growing of lettuce and root vegetables practically year-round. Now, throw in the fact that back east they were advertising Oregon is the place you could grow watermelons big enough to fill an entire wagon? Well, 
Farmers saw that as farming heaven, and they came in droves. Keep in mind during this time frame that the majority of Americans were farmers for a living, so there was a lot of people who would be interested in this farming utopia. So what about religion? Well, one of the religious groups that came about during this time was the Mormon religion. The Church of the Latter-day Saints had a fundamental difference of belief from Christian religions of the time. Because of these differences, they were shunned and even persecuted. Because of their persecution, they moved around to several places trying to find tolerance of their beliefs. In 1844, Joseph Smith was killed by a mob in Illinois, and Brigham Young became the new leader of the church. Seeking a solution to the continued persecution, he led them to Utah Territory, where they were able to settle and escape harassment and persecution they faced in the West. So what? After watching this video, you should be able to answer the following questions. What was Manifest Destiny, and how did it affect America? Who were the 49ers, and why did they go West? And finally, how did farming and religion lead people West? If you got all those, then you'll learn, learn, learn what you needed to learn. Stay tuned next time when I remember why the Alamo shouldn't be forgotten.